the scriptures, that the scriptures are coming out of your nose and coming out of your ears and coming out of your eyes. You've got to get so fixed on the word of God that it's just filling you to the fullness. Amen. But we, we read the word so casually and so little that most of us can quote the scripture after I start the sentence, but, but you don't have it deep down in your heart. Like I can say death and life are in the power of the tongue, and I could say death and life, and you all could finish that sentence. But does that mean you really know the scripture? Because knowing the scripture means that that revelation is burning on the inside of you, that you say, I know that death and life are in the power of my tongue, so I'm going to choose wisely the words that I say. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That word power means open hand. If you say, man, I think I'm going to die, you're opening up your hand saying, come on, I want to die. If you open up your hand and say, I'm dumb, you're inviting yourself to really believe that you're dumb. You're saying, yeah, That's I'm right. wrong here. I want dumb. What is dumb? I want that. Right. Your mouth is either destroying your life or it's leading your life. Death and life are in the power of my tongue. We could preach that scripture for the next hundred years because it's powerful. Sometimes we think, man, to change my situation, God's going to have to do this, and God's going to have to do this, and God's going to have to do this. But God's saying, if you will change your words, you will change your own situation. Yes, because you. everything I did, I did it by my mouth. Yes. I want you to be like me. And the way I act is that I speak. And because I am so careful with my words, what I speak carries weight, and what I yes. speak carries power. As a Christian, we should never be considered a blabbermouth. Christians should be the type of people that somebody looks at them and says, man, they don't always speak that much, but when they speak, everybody tunes in and listens. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I'm going to turn to Psalms chapter 34 as well. We're talking about occupying your mind and occupying your mouth. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You see, David said that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. I wonder if we were so full of praise to our God that I had to tell you all to stop saying praise the Lord because you just wanted to praise him so bad. But modern church, pastor has to beg you to say amen or beg you to say praise the Lord because our hearts aren't filled with praise to God. That's right. Because they're overwhelmed with our life and the situations that we're in. But I'm trying to tell you tonight, if you'll say, I'm not going to think certain thoughts anymore. I'm going to take charge over my mind and I'm definitely going to take charge over my mouth. You would create something that, that your thoughts became positive and your mouth started speaking good things. Amen. What if instead of saying a negative thought, you just said, praise the Lord. Every time you had one negative thought come in your mind, you said, praise God. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. What if you changed your mind and just said, praise God. Every time that happened, I guarantee you, your life would change. Amen. I guarantee you, your situation would change. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. As you praise the Lord, your problems get smaller and smaller and smaller. Amen. And your God gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes. And I'm here to tell you tonight that when you need your faith to work, God needs to be big. He needs to be bigger than your problems. When you need your faith to work, you've got to realize that God wants that good thing to happen to you that you're praying about. God loves his kids. He loves them deeply, and he wants to help them. You know, one thing I was studying about this week, the Bible says that Jesus' visage or his appearance, his face was so marred, it was more than that of a human. So when you watch the Passions of the Christ, 
It doesn't do any justice to how Jesus actually looked because we could still tell that that actor was a human, couldn't we? Jesus was marred more than that. But the Bible says he was marred like that because he carried our sickness and bore our griefs. If Jesus carried our sicknesses, why do we keep dealing with them? I, I believe with all my heart that when Jesus died on the cross, he said, did such a great work that he made it where healing is available to us. Amen. He made it where victory was available to us. He made it where joy was supposed to be like a river flowing into us. Amen. I know we go through hard times sometimes that we don't understand. But when I read this Bible, if my experience doesn't line up with this word, then I can't say that God doesn't want to do it. I just have to say... I don't know why it's not working, but I'm going to keep pressing That's until right. I Amen. get it. I don't yeah. understand, but I'm going to be like Jacob, and I'm going right. to hold on to God Amen. until he blesses me. Amen. Amen. Man, we want to see radical change in our lives, but we won't do radical things to get radical change. That's right. Sometimes you've got to look silly in front of everybody. I remember when I spoke in tongues that one Sunday night up there, I felt silly. I felt like I looked like a total idiot. I did. I felt silly. But some of you won't get full of the Holy Spirit tonight because you're afraid of looking silly. But guess what? I wasn't so scared of looking silly that I didn't go up and get what God said I could have. And some of you tonight, you need to realize, who cares if everybody thinks you look silly? If you will step out in faith for God, God will come through for you tonight. I promise you he will because his word promises that he wants to help you and he wants to deliver you and he wants to touch you in your body. But you've got to forget about what religion and experience have taught you and just say, I'm going to choose to believe the Bible. Amen. I choose it over everything I feel. But, but tonight, I want you to occupy yourself in your mind, thinking those positive thoughts. I want you to occupy your mouth with praise toward God. If you don't know what to say, just say, praise the Lord. And just keep right. saying it until you, you say, man, I've said this a lot today. But just keep on saying it yeah. and saying it and saying it. Last but not least, God wants you to occupy your house. Luke chapter 11, verse 24 through 26. This is my last scripture tonight. Luke 11, 24 through 26. It says that when an unclean spirit has gone out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest. And finding none, he says, I will return unto my house where I came out. And when he comes, he finds it swept and garnished or decorated. Then he goes and takes to him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. <clears throat> I've read that scripture so many times, and I'm like, God, what in the world does that mean? But when I go back up to verse 21, it says, When a strong man armed keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he takes from him all his armor, wherein he trusted and divides his spoils. Basically... When the spirit was cast out of the man or the woman or whatever it was, they cleaned up their house, but they didn't put anything in it to occupy it. So the demon went out and came back with seven of his buddies to overtake this person again. What that should mean to you tonight is that you need somebody stronger on your side than the oppositions and the enemy facing you. And I want to tell you tonight that the only person that is stronger than the opposition of the enemy is Jesus Christ Amen. by way of the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. What this person didn't have was the Spirit of God dwelling within them. Because I can promise you tonight that no demon in hell can stop the Spirit of our God. Amen. The Bible says, not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. Occupy your house. Let the Holy Spirit move inside of you. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. When you get saved, this is no longer your house. It is a temple unto God. What is a temple? It's a place consecrated for God. So now you're not just a body. You are a temple consecrated for your Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So now your life is yielded to the Holy Spirit. And you say, Holy Spirit, Lead me wherever you'd have me to go. Yes. Lord, I want you to take control and take charge of me. I yield myself to you. 
So we talked about occupying your mind, we talked about occupying your mouth, and we talked briefly about occupying your house. I'm here to tell you tonight that Jesus wants you to occupy until he comes back because he's got gifts and he's got rewards. You see, what you're doing right now is going to determine how you live your eternity. That's right. I believe everybody in this room is going to go to heaven, but I want to be going to heaven and being the mayor of Marion instead of the trash man of Marion. That's right. <laughs> I don't know what God's going to have us do, but all I know is I want to be close to God. Amen. And I think you need to live a life that you're in a leadership position yes, when you Jesus. get to heaven because Jesus is the supreme leader, so I want to be in a place where I can be close Amen. to Him. I don't want to be distant from God. So what I tell you tonight is if you will occupy your mind, occupy your mouth, and occupy your body with God, just give yourself wholly to God. You will live a life that pleases God so well that he says, well done. Yes. Come dwell with me. Take charge over ten cities. But you've got to use the gifts Jesus gave you through salvation. And if you don't use them, it's your own fault. Amen. But gosh, we can take charge of our minds. we got the mind of Christ. We can take charge Amen. of our mouths. we got the Spirit of God living That's on the inside right. of us. And I know you can take charge of the old flesh because the Holy Spirit is stronger than your flesh. Amen. You That's just right. got to believe it with all yeah. your heart. Amen. Praise God. If you'll bow your head tonight, I want to just pray a prayer of blessing over us tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. I have presented your word, and I thank you for your word, God. I pray that you would quicken some people's hearts tonight to that word, Father, that if they would give their mind wholly to you and realize who they are and give their mouth wholly to you, God, it would change their life. I pray, Father, that you would bless each and every person in this room, God. I pray that you would fill them fresh with your Holy Spirit. Fill them with the anointing again, God. Fill them with boldness again. Fill them with a fire that stirs them up that they can't sit still, God, but that they want to go deeper and deeper with you. I bless them, Lord, through your word in the name of Jesus. And God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for how you're moving in our lives. And we thank you, God, that you've got so much more to do. And I know, God, I want to be a part of it. And I want them to be a part of it as well. Yes, Jesus. And I believe those that will surrender to you in a deeper way will get to be a part of your work in these last days, Father. Help us to keep our mouths and our minds and our flesh in order, God. I pray for your anointing over us in Jesus' name. Amen. And God, as we lead out of this room tonight, take care of us and keep us safe, Lord, yes, until Jesus. our next appointed time. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.